Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of I am Penge and welcome back to Chef. So before we kick things off as is now traditional in this particular series of Chef, let's take a look at the restaurant name because we have rebranded again, the restaurant's rebranded itself, it keeps it fresh and exciting for the customers and such like. So for the name this time round, I turned to Mrs Penge for some assistance. I asked my wife if she would like to give the restaurant a name, I explained what was going on, I said it was a Chef game, we had a restaurant and each time round we were renaming the restaurant to make it all sort of you know, dynamic and interesting. You can pick any name, any language, off your pop. You choose. So she chose German as the language. Now, I don't know German. I don't speak German. I'm not entirely sure, but they're very foody, the Germans. You know, they're like sausages and meat and beer and that kind of stuff. That's my kind of meals. I like that. So she's chosen the German language, and the name of the restaurant is Mein Mann ist ein Dummkopf. There is an F at the end of there. It just it doesn't show in that little box. But yeah, so my, mass, my man ist ein Dummkopf which I assume is something lovely, but yeah, there you go. It sounds very good. It sounds very German indeed. So yes, suggested by Mrs. Penn, suggested by my wife. That is lovely. My man ist ein Dummkopf is the restaurant name this time out. Now we've got a couple of things that we need to get done today. We've got a couple of things that we need to do. Number one is possibly take a look at our prices because our prices were not great, apparently. Maybe we were slightly overpricing a few things here and there. If we go to here, prices are the lowest sort of uh, rating that we have. Although to be fair, that has now come up. That was an average prices rating as of yesterday or whatever it was last week in the game. But then uh, today's, when it's you know, it ticked over to the next day slash week in game, that's not gone back up to good prices. Do you know what? Maybe we don't need to do anything with the prices. Maybe we can just leave that. Yeah, I think we leave that. Let's leave that for now then. Okay, well, there you go. That's one thing that we don't need to do. Hooray! And it means we still make quite a lot of money. Hurrah, that's lovely. The second thing we're going to do is tables. Now, last time out, I uh, there was a little message that popped up on the load screen that said, oh, there might be a pathing issue. You need to replace all your tables. And I said, get, get out of here. No, that's too expensive. But it's been pointed out to me that, of course, when we sell something, we get some money back. We've got 11 and a half grand. 11 and a half grand. So we should, in theory, be okay to sell all these tables and replace them with the fancier tables. That's what I think we're going to do. That's what I think we're going to do. So we've got to sell all of these tables. Now there are people outside, <laughs> there are people outside queuing up. So, so wait there a second, I've paused time. I'm gonna sell all these tables and then replace them all magically before your very eyes. So that 12.07 is gonna be a very magical time for these people because they're looking through the door, they saw these old tables, all of a sudden, ping, they're going to be replaced with magical new nice tables. So, uh, yes, that could be very interesting for those guys. So what we're going to do is, and this is how it works, you go into there, you click that, you put sell. You go there, you sell them all. Yeah, so we are getting some money back. Look, a little tiny bit of money back, but that's fine. Right, so this is, there's quite a lot of tables. So let's sell all of the tables. It's not letting me pick that table for some reason. Nope, I can't, I can't pick that table. Maybe because... Those people are going to go and sit at that table. Maybe the game has already determined that the person welcoming those people has said, yes, this is your table. And they're going to be seated there. It, possibly in the only table in the restaurant. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Right, let's sell all these tables. Then we can look at which ones we're actually going to replace them with. Okay, it's all clear. It's all clear of tables, except the one in the corner. So yes, I assume these people have been assigned this table and they're going to go and sit there. So as for what we're going to replace them with, well, I've been swayed by the, the marketing. I've been swayed by the marketing, absolutely. We're going to go for luxury tables because it says silk cloth, comfortable chairs, infinite prestige. This is the table you need for your restaurant. Absolutely, I'm sold. <laughs> sold. So there's uh, four C2Ones of those and two C2Ones of those down here. We just need to figure out exactly what kind of colours we want for those. So do you want a kind of grey, a blue, a kind of blue, greenier blue, a greeny colour or a, oh that colour. That goes well with the rest of the restaurant, doesn't it? That sort of red colour. And then the colour of the chairs, colour of the chairs, I don't like that quite so much with the colour of the tablecloth. I think maybe the first one, white chairs, red tablecloth, absolutely, let's do that. Now here is an interesting thing, if we put these little tables in, so it's that one and that one, so it's the end colour of the tablecloth, the first one for the chairs, can we fit, can we fit two people, two of those chairs down here to the tables in this little gap? No, I don't think we can, I don't think anything can go right up to the edge there, and then also fit there. I guess that green space is where the... Um, the waiter is going to stand. That's what I'm assuming. That's where the table service is going to happen. I guess that's what that green bit means. So, okay, never mind. Right. So we'll have all those ones down there like they were. 
Now, do we want to switch them round? Do we want to switch them? Well, that's not right, is it? Well, how do we how do we rotate them again? Right, there we go. Do we want it to be like that down here? Or like, yeah, that's they're the other way around. They've got a different orientation. Let's put them this way. Let's put them this way. Absolutely. It'll it'll all be fine. It'll all be fine in the end. Right, so let's try and move them as near as we can. Okay, so it can't be just there then. Hang on, notch it over. As near as we can to the end to maximise the space. So right, we'll have a luxury table for 300 muddies. Thank you very much. Now I did notice in the corner, I've got a little nagging message saying you need to add more tables. Yeah, I know, I'm on it. I'm absolutely on it. So let's try and put the tables as close as we can together. Now yeah, look, there is a bit of a gap. There's a little bit of a gap there now. I wonder if that's somehow intentional and if it's they're spaced out sort of further. I don't know. Right, so we'll try and do that there. We'll try and put these nice tables all the way down here. I'm a little bit worried that we're not going to be able to get the same amount of tables in that we did have before. These look a little bit bigger. These look a bit bigger. I mean, am I doing myself out of some tables there? We've got 20. Now, beforehand, we had 94, didn't we? We had a capacity of 94. I wonder if we can get that again. Right, let's put that one at the very end. That can go just there because it's at the end, and that's fine. And then we'll build some more down here. So is that in line with that? I wish there were some guide things. Right, they're on that line of tiles. Just there. We're going to try and put these as close as we can together to try and maximise the amount of seats we can fit into the restaurant. Okay, so let's go forth and just put these in. Come on, one more at the end. Yes, beautiful. Uh, another row of those, possibly? Yeah, let's get another row of those in. Okay, there we go. So that's nice. They're all in. I mean, the is the colour the best colour we've got? It, it looks a bit browner on screen than the redder colour there. But, Joe, whatever. It kind of goes with the walls and stuff, like the sort of terracotta -y sort of feel to it. So I don't think now, unfortunately, we can fit any of those ones down the side here. Oh, yes, we can. Ew, I didn't think we could. But, right, if we rotate that round, we can certainly fit some just there. Yes. Even if it's just one. Even if we can just fit one table in. Now, could we take that thing out? Hang on, come out of that. Can we Can we move you then? I don't particularly care for this thing. <laughs> I'm not really that bothered. Can we put this somewhere else so we don't lose it and we don't lose the money we've invested on it? I mean, can we put it in the way of the window or is that just a stupid thing to do? Where can we put this thing that I don't really want? Down here next to the other one. That'll do. So that's now out the way. Now, that might mean that we can fit some more of these tables in in the corner. So if we just rotate them round, how near can we get them to this corner? So it's not so much that we need to move them over one. We did. We were able to build one there. Yeah, so it's sort of there, but not that far into the corner for some obscure reason. Okay, so one there. Right, and then, and then bring it down. Can we fit another one in? Can we fit another? Yes, one there. Now, imagine we're going to struggle to fit... We can put one there even though there is a wine rack there. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to do it because why not? Because that looks fun. So yes, please. We'll put one there. I think we might get more than 94 things in now. I think we may well get more, more seats, which would be a surprise, I'll be honest, but that's fine. Right, bring that down. Come on, where can I put one of these again? Is that now in line? It's really hard to try and work out whether things are in line or not. Right, we'll notch it back over. So I think, okay, we can build there again. Okay, well, let's do that then. So we'll try and get them as near as we can to the other ones. Yeah, that these are further further apart. These are spaced way more sort of uh, further apart than they were previously. I wonder if there is a reason for that. I wonder if that's a specific reason. I don't I don't really know. Right, let's see if we can cram some more of these little tables in. I want to be able to at least get back up to 94. At least get up to 94 seating. I'm not going to replace all my seating then just to find out that it was not really worth it. Okay, hang on. Maybe we can't put that because it's too near the door to the kitchen. So look, we can put one there. So how about then, if I come out of that, we, we, we move that one, because that should be able to be moved. No. Oh, yeah, hang on. There. There. But that's not level with that. I don't really understand what's going on. This is very weird. Um, okay, Joe, you know what? I'm just going to try and make these fit as best we can. Okay, right. I've done my best. I've done my best. I don't really understand the logic of how the tables are being placed. I don't know kind of what determines where they can and can't be placed. Because if I try and put them like this, so as we're looking at it, uh, a chair at the top and the bottom of the table, it says, no, that's a, that's a preposterous idea. How dare you even think such a thing? But yet, if you rotate it round and kind of fiddle about with the position, it goes, oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you can have the table and chairs that way round. Absolutely. You fill your boots. Go for it. So I don't really understand. So can we... Maybe we could put one there, 
move that over if we spin that round but see now that's not going to let us put one around there which doesn't make any sense i can put one there but but no i can sort of sit one it doesn't really make any sense i've got one there and one there can i fit one in here can i very very cheaply just slot one of those in just there come on them i must be able to there's room there's room how how much room do people need to sit here no okay so can i can we put one by the window can we put them by the window? No. So no, it's a bit weird. I don't quite know what, what sort of governing those. But yeah, I mean, that just looks really obscure now. <laughs> it looks really odd. I can't put one here for some reason, I guess, because that table's in the way. But it does look like if we put another table in here when that one's being replaced, we will be back up to 94 seats. So I don't think we're going to be missing out on any seats. They're just all slightly different looking. I'm not really sure that I like them. And these things here look a little bit like bottle tops. But you know what? It's fine. Right, so we've done that. <laughs> that took far longer than I was expecting it to. But there we go. So at some point, we are going to have to try and replace this. We're going to have to try and replace this. Let's go and spend our experience points. I think we know where we're going with this. Let's go down the meat route because we're slowly working our way up to the top tier here. It's very exciting. Right, let's just get this bottom tier done, shall we? Let's have that finished. So we'll have the, I don't know what that first word is, mylard adept. Learning about mylard reactions is the key to unlock the full flavor of meat. So yeah, we'll have that. So lots of recipe qualities going up, which is very nice. Uh, and what is that? Preparation time down from 2%, if we spend both, up to 8%. For uh, meat recipes. Yeah, that's good. We'll take that. So that's three points spent. I still don't think we're going to get to 40 on this one, are we? And then what else can we spend here? That's full. That's full. Meatballs minus 14% preparation time and plus three meatball quality. Yeah, okay, go on. I'm game. I'll have that. Thank you very much. I'm I'm still a little bit... I, I don't really want to get boiled meat. <laughs> it just sounds... It sounds very unappealing. Uh, what's that there? Grilled meat. Grilled meat, preparation time, down and quality up. Yeah, do you know what? Why not? Yeah, let's get that done. And that's kind of that tier done bar this terrible crime where you're boiling some meat. So uh, I do like that where it says there. Um, there's science behind the creation of a good boiled meat. You can't just drop stuff into... I suppose, think it's supposed to say hot water. You can't just drop stuff into hot water. I think that's kind of how boiled meat works. <laughs> you have some boiling water. You put the meat in sorted you take it out when it's been boiled enough i think that's kind of how that works so we're so nearly there we're so nearly there but a lot of our meat dishes are now sort of at supreme quality and that the quickest they can be prepared and all that kind of stuff next time yeah all that's done so we'll be working on these so we can spend a few points on those in fact we could spend a lot of points up here couldn't we grilled meat cooking time down again which is very very good so yeah so we'll maybe work on those and then eventually we'll get up to here the protein kings and the ingredient cost down. It is that's exactly what we want, really. Ten percent meat ingredients cost cheaper, which is very, very good. So yeah, really, that's kind of what we're after. That's kind of what we're after because a lot of our dishes are meat based. So they, if we can, you know, bring the cost down of all the meat dishes, that is fantastic. Right, and we've got ourselves ten ingredients points. As always, we're going to just go and uh, get three of the top tier ingredients and bank our one remaining point until next time so where is it ingredients panel let's go i think we might go for three quite disparate you know very very distinct things i think from the veg list let's get tier three black truffles i've never eaten a black truffle they might taste terrible but let's get those anyway and then let's get ourselves a fish dish in order to try and you know increase the amount of fish recipes we've got so what do we want from here? I mean, I don't really know much about these. I quite like the idea of a red gurnard, <laughs> just because it sounds a bit like Bernard. I don't really know. Mussels, I quite like mussels. Mussels and garlic and butter are quite nice. Let's make a sort of mussels dish. So we'll have that. And then from over here, let's get a fruit, a nice high quality fruit. And we shall try and make a nice sort of fruit, maybe another cheesecake or something. See what we can do with it now. Now we've got the good ingredients. Hang on, did we get the... um? Mascarpone, yeah, the high quality mascarpone stuff, which I think that is what you make cheesecake. Yes, Italian cream cheese used in desserts. That's got to be what you use to make cheesecake. So if we get one of these, we can maybe can make ourselves a better cheesecake. But what do we want to go for? What would make quite a nice, a nice cheesecake? I kind of think pineapple. A pineapple cheesecake might be fun. I have a pen. I have pineapple. Ah. Uh, Apple, no, pineapple pen. <laughs> Very good. I like the little rollover things. 
I like those. That's funny. Uh, if you don't know what that is, just search for pineapple pen or apple pen. You'll, you'll be in for a treat if you do not know what that is. So yeah, we'll have a pineapple. Thank you very much. We shall bank that one point for next time. Okay, right. Let's go to the recipe editor when it loads. So the first thing, let's get our mussels in. Let's make this sort of this garlic mussels kind of thing. Garlic butter mussels sort of dish that I've got in mind. So it's going to be kind of fish soup. I think that's kind of how it's going to be working. That sort of looks like what we're going to have. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a bit more like that. And then and then the picture doesn't really help. Uh, that That's probably fine. That'll do, whatever. Um, right, what do you want to call it? What do you want to call our dish? So it's going to be mussels and garlic and butter and cream possibly and you know it's all gonna hopefully be quite nice what do you want to call that there we go we're gonna call it mussels but no brussels because in this game there is no such thing as brussels sprouts even though they are lovely oh divisive comment but yeah no brussels so it's good mussels but no brussels because that's fun so why the heck not so here we go let's start the recipe let's see what we can do with this okay there's three types of thing at the top i wasn't expecting there to be three I was expecting there to be one. Right, mussels, these are very expensive as well. They are very expensive. This dish costs 8 27 already. It costs 8 27 And all it is, is some mussels in a bowl. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, so we've got that. Then we want to put in butter, because that's nice. We've got tier 3 butter. So let's put that there. It's already at 123. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So mussels with butter. We then want garlic, obviously, to make it delicious. So how's that going to work? 127. I bet if we put it down here, it makes it go up far more. 140. Garlic with uh, garlic mussels in a sort of nice garlic butter sauce thing is 140 on its own. Do we need anything else? Do you know what? A bit of black pepper. Oh, I should have been. I should have got black pepper, shouldn't I? I keep using this all the time. A bit of black pepper up to 144. What is that? Saltiness. Balanced by sweetness. Okay. Uh, sugar might actually help with that. Uh, where is it? There. Sugar. Can we put some sugar in? Up to 152. It's brought down the saltiness, so the exclamation mark's gone. Um, yeah, so taste is 40. The flavour is only 14. For something with mussels and garlic in, it's not very sort of, uh, a, not got a lot of aroma to it. That's quite surprising, if I'm honest. That's quite surprising. Um, okay, what else do we want to put in? What else do we want to put into this dish? I kind of think that should just be it. That should just be it. Maybe some bread. Maybe some bread on the side so you can dunk it in afterwards. That's probably a nice thing. 152 to 152 or 150. Hang on, it's got to 155 now. I don't fully understand. Hang on, did that make a different? Now it's on 155. Um, not really sure what's going on there. I like the idea of having bread just on the side, so you can you can dunk the bread into the lovely garlicky, buttery sort of stuff. Oh yeah, like cream or something, like a sort of a cream kind of thing. Cream, yes, yeah, there. Add cream in 159. Now it's a bit fatty. Uh, balanced by sourness and bitterness. Something sour and bitter. Uh, okay, what about tea leaves? They are very bitter indeed. Let's put that in. 153. I did not have the effect that I thought it might. Or 143. No, definitely do that. Um, what can we put in? What can we put in to offset the cream that we just put in? Uh, also, weird enough, that's brought the cooking time down. That's brought the cooking time down. Okay, maybe because you're cooking them in mussels or something. I don't, I don't really know. Water? I mean, do we need to put some water in? No, apparently adding some water to this dish makes it utterly terrible. Yeah, that's a really awful idea. <laughs> Some sort of stock? 100 and something or other. Yeah, that's not going to work either. Oh, 161. Vegetable stock makes it go to 161. What about regular stock? 159. Okay, so vegetable stock makes it go up, but, but regular stock doesn't, even though they've both got one saltiness value. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, sourness and bitterness. Hang on, could we squeeze? It's fish, it's mussels. Could we, could we squeeze a lemon in there? Pop a little lemon in, 177. Now it's a bit sour. <laughs> Do you know what? That's probably fine. I don't think we're going to get much better than that. I'm not going to make another weird dish where I have to put pineapples and stuff into it. Mussels with a bit of, sort of creamy, buttery mix there with garlic and pepper. Sprinkling of sugar, just take the edge off. Uh, stock, lemon, just, you know, give it a bit of zest. And then bread to dunk in the sauce at the end. I think that's fine. So mussels but no brussels. Yes, 177. Absolutely. That's done. Let's go and pop that. Oh no, let's press the right button. Let's pop that onto our menu. That is a soup. I haven't got a lot of soups, I don't think. Four. 
So let's add another one. Uh, that's costing 404. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, I thought it was more expensive than that. I thought it was more expensive than that, but okay, fine, we'll have that. Um, soups, mussels, but no brussels. Let's make that eight as well. Why not? Let's do that. If it costs four to make just over, let's have it as eight. We make a nice bit of profit on there. And yeah, this mussel soup can just go. Can we just remove this? <laughs> I don't ever want this ever again. And then dessert wise, we've got some nice ingredients for dessert. What can we make? What did we just get? We got the pineapple. Oh yeah, ah, oh, we yeah, we got the um what was that thing we got? The truffles, whatever it was. Was it truffles? Come on, ingredients panel. Remind me. What did we get? Was it truffles? Yes, black truffles. What can we do with those? What can we do with those? I don't know. Let's make a dessert first. Let's go to the recipe editor once more and go to here and see what desserts we can actually make. Now, do we do a pineapple cheesecake? Oh, yeah. Go on, then. Let's do it. Let's make a pineapple cheesecake. Uh, what's going to look kind of pineapple-y? So that colour, maybe? Definitely not the pink colours. Yeah, let's go back to maybe even the first one. That'll do. Um, pineapple. Yeah, there. Definitely. And is that a strawberry on top? Not entirely sure. That's just a piece of green. I don't know what that is. <laughs> a bit of lawn cuttings. Okay, so we're going to make a pineapple cheesecake. Okay, we're going to call it cheese and pine is fine, just because that bit at the end rhymes. And that'll do. Right, let's start the recipe. Let's see what we can do with this. Now, that was some sort of binding agent, wasn't it? Is that sort of butter and stuff? Is that what that was? Yes. Right, we've got some very high quality butter. So it's up to 41. That is very good. I like the way that this is vegetarian friendly. Yeah, I thought gelatin was pretty dominantly a meat it's sort of you know it's an animal fats thing isn't it? gelatin but whatever there we go it's still fine for vegetarians so um so they've got butter and gelatin now we want to put in the stuff so let's put in pineapple it's already at 109 that's fantastic okay what if we put strawberries in as an optional extra and then maybe blueberries as well up to 121 what if we put the blueberries down as a secondary thing 126 what if we take the strawberry out put it up there 113 or 126. Yeah, we'll have that. Now, it's a bit sour at the moment. So we could do with some sweetness. Now, shall we add mascarpone? Oh, hang on. We could put mascarpone up there. 128. Ah, okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. What if we just put butter in there? No, butter in here might be an all right addition, though. Yes, 135. Still a bit sour. Still a little bit sour. Um, What can we do with that then? So what? hang on. What does offset that? What was it? Sweetness and fatness. Oh, hang on. Sugar. Let's just chuck some sugar in. That would make perfect sense, wouldn't it? Put some sugar in. 133. Put it up to the top. 101. Oh, that's that's awful. <laughs> Doesn't work at all. Maybe that's too sweet. Sugar is too much because it raises the sugar up too much. Sourness comes back down. So we need something that's a little bit sweet, but not that sweet. How about chocolate? Come on, chocolate, save the day. 147, yes. Are, are we going to get much better than that? Are we going to get much better than that? It's a lovely chocolate, pineapple, blueberry, strawberry. I'm imagining the strawberry is just going to be placed on the top. Where oh, There was a little strawberry type thing, wasn't there? I'm guessing the strawberry is just going to be placed on the top in a sort of you know, appearances more than actual flavourings kind of thing. So it's got pineapple in. It's got some lovely blueberries in because blueberries are in anything that we make that's got to do with fruit because it's only one of a couple of things we've got that's high quality. So that's all good. Butter and chocolate mixed with mascarpone. Is there anything else we need? Right, hang on. Have I missed anything obvious? I probably have. Let's just have a little look. Okay, popping some almonds on the top ups it from 147 to 151, but then it does make the sweetness bar go into a sort of exclamation-y sort of, oh, look out, this is a bit high, and also fatness as well. How fattening are almonds? Really? Hang on, how bad are they? Oh, they are. They're quite sweet, but also quite fattening. Okay, but yeah, 147 up to there. What's the flavour like if we take it out? 36 without uh, and 40 with it in. Do you know what? I think that's fine. Cheese and pine is fine. I think that's pretty good. Gelatin, uh, the cheesy sort of bit mixed with the butter and the chocolate. Kind of make it all nice. Yummy, yummy. That's nice. Put some almonds on it. Put some blueberries and pineapples within it. You know, so sort of stir it in, marble it or something. And then just throw a strawberry on the top. And that's lovely. Cheese and pine is fine. We've got a cheesecake. That's very exciting. Right. Go and throw that onto the menu. Have we got that many desserts? No, so we've only got four desserts as well. Cheese and pine is fine, can go for 
eight as well because the other cheesecake is eight that can no 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 not 28.92 that that is that's a little bit steep for a cheesecake <laughs> that's a little bit steep so um yeah we'll have that uh right let's see let's see if they fix the ice cream issue let me just go and quickly put together an ice cream let's just go and quickly just bung one together and see if we can actually include it on the menu or not there we go, that's a fairly basic thing. So some pineapple is the main ingredient again because we've just unlocked it and that's one of the only few fruit things that we've got that's any good. Bit of salt to kind of offset the sweetness of that. Vanilla, because it's ice cream. Vanilla ice cream is always good. Blueberries, because blueberries. Lemon and lime to provide that nice zest. And then a bit of coffee at the end. I mean, who knows what on earth flavor this is. This is pineapple, blueberry, citrus, coffee flavored thing, but with some salt and vanilla in as well. So yeah, now I don't know if this is going to work. Let's just save it. Let's see if it will actually work. So I've called it the eye. Ice cream is right. So let's see if that appears on our list. No, it does not. That is a shame. That is a shame. Now, maybe I wonder if they'll fix that and the, the ice cream recipes that we've created will suddenly appear. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it? That would be very lovely. Okay, last thing we want to do then is let's take a look. What can we do that includes those truffle things? How, do, how does one serve a truffle? I don't, I don't really know. Do you just serve it alongside a bit of meat? I don't really know. What meat? Hang on. What meats have we got? What meats have we got? We'll do a roasted meat and let's have it with some truffles or something. What meat do we have that we just haven't got as a roasted meat? Let's go and have a look. I mean, we could do roast snails. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Um, or could we do some sort of fancy fry-up? Could we do that? We could have bacon. Bacon and egg. Uh, wherever eggs might be, over there somewhere. We've got tier three bacon, tier three eggs. We could put black truffly things in. Um, what else could we put on bacon and egg? Have we got tomatoes? We've got tier three tomatoes. We could create some sort of fry up. The only thing is, I don't know whereabouts that would sit in here, really. I'm not really sure. Would it be grilled meat? Because you grill the bacon, possibly? Let's try it as that. Let's try a grilled meat dish. Let's try and make a fry up. Uh, a, a fry up might be a kind of a British terminology thing, but a fry up is generally a breakfasty thing and it's fried stuff. So fried mushrooms, fried bacon, sausages. Sometimes you can have sausages on there as well if you like. That's a sort of standard thing. So grilled tomatoes, maybe. Uh, lots of stuff. Eggs, or fried eggs, and all that sort of stuff. It's all very, very nice and very yummy. Let's try and create one of those. The picture is going to look nothing like what I want the end result to be. But let's give it a go anyway. There we go. So I'm going to call it a fanciful fry-up feast. And the picture actually isn't that bad. I mean, it's not brilliant. You don't look at that and think fry-up. But fry-ups do contain sausages and they do sometimes contain chopped tomato. So that is about as good as we're going to get on the little picture things. So here we go. Let's try and make us a fry-up, but also with truffles because that's why it's fancy. So bacon. Bacon is a prime ingredient in a fry-up. There we go. Oh, hang on. Have I got tier three? Oh, I have got tier three bacon. Hooray. There we go. 83 already. Lovely. Now, I don't think I've got very... I haven't got any sausages, have I? We'll have to have pork and just pretend that's a sausage. There we go. Pork. We've, we've shaped it in the sort of... In the shape of a sausage. So that's fine. So we've got some pork. So we've got bacon and sausages. Right. Then we want eggs. Now, this might be a terrible, terrible thing, but I'm just going to put them in anyway and just see what happens. 109, 105. Okay, eggs aren't the main ingredient. Let's put them down the bottom. 110. That's fine. Right, tomatoes. Tomatoes, they go on a good old fry up. Yep, up to 149. And it's got vegetables in, so that's good. So we've got bacon, uh, bacon and egg, which is nice. Sausages, tomatoes. What else do you have? What else do you have in a fry up? Mushrooms mushrooms well let's put these black truffles in and just see what happens with those 158 is a main ingredient or 158 is a secondary ingredient so it makes no difference but they are very expensive <laughs> they're very expensive this is a very expensive dish okay so we've got that in right what else what else do we want to put into here to make it a proper fry up -y dish Okay, I'm thinking black pepper. That's always got to be a good thing, hasn't it? 166 or 174. Yes, definitely. We'll have that as 174. No fruit stuff, none of that stuff. No peas or whatever. It's going to come down to here. Now, ketchup. Ketchup is important. Yes, let's have ketchup up to 187. Is there anything we can do here? Sourness and bitterness. Or tea leaves. Tea leaves are bitter. Can that up it? No, that brings it down to 177. Come on, come on. Just notch it up a little tiny bit, please. Oh, we, I've, we haven't got one over 200 yet, and it makes me a bit sad. How about salt? 
I mean, that's a fry-up. A fry-up ingredient has salt in it. There we go. It's a, it's a primary thing of a fry-up. They're very salty and very lovely. No, again, doesn't really do much. Now, one thing that you could add is beans. We haven't got beans. I haven't unlocked beans. Like, baked beans in a tomato -y sauce is a standard kind of fry up -y thing as well. I'm just trying to rack my brains as to what else you might have. So there's mushrooms you could, in theory, have. You could have fried mushrooms. I don't think we've got high-quality mushrooms. Does that help? 187 as a secondary ingredient or 177 as a secondary ingredient. No, so no one's really bothered with the mushrooms. So, for a fry up, we've got fried bacon and fried pork uh, sausages. We've got chopped tomatoes. We can chop in, yeah, maybe plum tomatoes or something. So that's nice. We've got tomatoes. We've got some fried eggs. We've got some ketchup. We've got some truffle. What else can we add? Of course, bread. Bread, you can have fried bread, you could have toast, that kind of stuff. So yes, bread would be a good thing, because yeah, then you can use that to soak up all the stuff. So all the fat and stuff that's come from the bacon and out the sausages. And you can dunk it into your eggs and all that kind of stuff. I think that is as good as we're going to get. That is as good as we're going to get for our exciting, fanciful, fry-up feast. So yeah, all these things. And yeah, bread was the final ingredient there really, that made any difference. I'd have that. I'd absolutely have that. I've never had black truffle before, but I'd certainly give it a go. The only thing is, it's a very expensive dish. It's twelve seventy-two because of the black truffle. Uh, there is a little bit of a fatness issue there, balanced by sourness and bitterness. Again, can we can we check the tea leaves in? Will it make a difference now if we put the tea leaves in? Not really. No, it doesn't bring that down enough to remove the exclamation mark. Does it make it better? 12 cents. It ups it by 1p. Do you know what? We'll leave them in. We'll leave that in because it does bring the um, the fatness down a little bit. It kind of brings it almost to tolerable levels. So, yeah, is there anything else we can do? Sourness. Hang on. How about, how about a bit? Of, can we just squeeze a bit of lime over it? That's just quite horrible. But there you go. A bit of lime or a bit of a lemon sort of more. Come on. Come on. Lemon. Oh, I was hoping it might push it up. 195. Our quest for a meal over 200 rating still continues, but 195 is very good. Uh, we'll save that. We'll save that. Uh, let me know what you think. Should I recreate the fanciful fry-up feast with more things? I think that looks okay, but yeah, let me know if I've missed something out really obvious. Apart from sort of baked beans. I haven't got any beans on the sort of menu. You can unlock them. I just haven't got any on there right now, so I can't put them in. But if there's anything else I've forgotten, please do let me know. Oh, another thing... Uh, this is more for UK people because I don't know if it's a worldly thing or not. Um, uh, black pudding. Black pudding isn't on the thing either. I don't think black pudding exists in this game. I think it's a very UK specific sort of thing. Uh, yeah, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it is a UK thing, black pudding. And again, I can't put that on. But they've got black truffle instead, so that's kind of a stand-in. So we'll save that. It cost twelve seventy-eight. I mean, what are we going to charge for that? 18 monies? That seems quite expensive, but okay, right. Well, let's let's add that in as well. So main course, a fanciful fry-up feast into there. Uh, and is it going to be our most expensive dish? I think it might be. Or do we make it equal to some of the... Let's make it 15. Although we don't make a lot of money on that, do we? 12.78. Do you know what? Let's make it 18. Why not? That'll do. There we go. 18 monies. <laughs> Are people going to go for that? I'm not entirely sure. So we've created some nice new things. That's all good. Um, I still think it would be so useful to see the actual properties of the thing when you click on it. It'd be so useful to see what the sort of the quality is like. Because now I don't know what's good and bad anymore. These are ones that I've made, but I don't know what's good. Is a load of carp quality 100? Or is it quality 190? Or is it quality 85? I don't know. I really don't know. So it'd be really useful if you could click on them and see them or just order them or something. Have some indication of what they are when they go onto the menu. Because you, know, you are left a little bit in the dark, which is a shame. Right, okay. Can we make a nice salad with something on it? Maybe next time we'll do that. Next time we might make a fish-based salad. We could get a nice fish thing in and create a fish salad. That might be quite a good thing. That might bring some uh, fish people in. And as well, not fish people. I don't mean it'll bring fish people in. That would be weird. That'd be like cannibalism if they had that. Um, there is a thing in here, stats-wise. If we look at customers, sort of uh, upper-class families like kind of desserts and they like seafood. But because I've got so much meat on the menu, that's why lower-class families are coming in. Because we've got a lot of lower-class families. So we've got a lot of the uh, sort of meat dishes and carbs. That's why we're attracting so many lower-class families. The thing is here, though, if we started targeting upper-class people, then yes, we could get more money out of them, which would be very, very nice. I don't think we get blue-collar and white-collar workers. 
I don't think we've even got food enthusiasts or gourmet things yet. I don't really know. I don't think we get any vegetarians or vegans in. We do get tourists in, quite like high class tourists. We have got some desserts in, so maybe we'll start swaying them and yeah, get rid of the vegan options. I don't know. Maybe we need to do that next time as well. We need to take a look at that. But right now, here we go. Right. Wow. Remember this? There was a restaurant. So it's time to um, time to start time moving on. People can come into uh, my man ist ein Dummkopf. And we shall see how it goes, right? How are they going to work with the new tables? I guess, yeah, look, they're seated there, which is somewhat irritating, but never mind. So when they're gone, the instant these folks leave, we are going to rush over and replace this table and maybe move these. Oh, can we move those tables around? We might have to do it right before the evening session begins. That might be what we have to do, actually. We might have to leave it for now, leave it for now. And then when the lunchtime session is done, just before people turn up for the evening session, we may have to just shift the tables around. Because, yeah, if we get another one in there, another one in there, that's going to be 100, uh, 194. <laughs> that would be very uh, space saving. 94 seats again, which is fine. I don't mind that. At the minute we're down, we're down a whole table's worth. And that annoys me a bit. Look, there's people outside. Oh, by the way. By the way, somebody in the comments shocked me. They said, oh, by the way, you can put tables outside. And I went, what? What do you mean you can put tables outside? Unfortunately, no, you cannot. I don't know if they're mistaken. They're just trying to have me on or something. I don't know. But no, look, no tables outside. Big red tables there. You can't put them outside. I don't think you can put any of them outside. Not if you pick like one with a plastic cover or whatever. That looks horrific. <laughs> look at this. What is this all about? But yeah, I don't think you can put any of them outside. No, you can't put them there. You can't put them in the garden, which is a bit of a shame. Even though the garden is lovely. So, um, yeah, tables don't go outside. But well done, well done person who said that because I certainly certainly did go and have a look. Right, let's move time on until the end of this particular sitting. We'll see how we're doing financially and we'll see how we're doing in terms of reputation. Okay, lunchtime session is still going. There's still people here at 25 minutes past four. There's only a couple of tables worth, but now we can start looking at this. So we can remove this table. So get rid of you. Absolutely. And now let's see what we can do with the rest of these other tables. So can we get another one of those in? So a luxury table like that. I'm going to move it in and get another one in sort of just as as near as we can. So just there. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to put one here, oh, because those other tables are in the way. So come out of that. Move you possibly to... Oh, we can't move you right now. Hang on. No, don't do that. We need to move you. We can't move you either. We might just sell you so we can move you to put you anywhere. Just plonk you down there to get another one of those tables in. This is a bit of a rigmarole, isn't it? Because that table did go in the corner. It did fit in the corner. No, that does not fit in the corner. We've done ourselves out of some table space here. We've done ourselves out of four seats, which is not good. I'm not really very happy about that. That's that's not encouraging. I don't know why we can't fit that table in anywhere around here at all. It's like there's plenty of room. <laughs> there's loads of room. Just go just there. I wonder if it's because that thing's in the corner. I wonder if it's because that those bits and bobs are in that corner. Right, hang on. can we move those things? Can we just put them somewhere? Ah, oh, dear me, we've got no room to put anything. Can we just put them there? That'll do. Yeah, it's out the way. It's facing the wrong way. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's happened again. Uh, and we'll move the vase. I want to move the, 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 not that. That's fine. I want to move that to say there. Yep, good. Now can we have a table in? Can we flip it round maybe? No, no. It just doesn't fit. There's just no room for tables in there. Can we have the smaller tables? Can we fit those in? Does it like those at all? No, it's this space in the corner for some reason. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Yes. It, it liked... Hang on. It likes that table. That... Ah, like that. Uh, okay, fine. I'll do that then. Okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, we'll have that and that. So we've got 92... 92 seats. So yeah, I think we've done ourselves out of a seat or two, which is a little bit irritating. We've done ourselves out of, a, out of some seats, which I don't particularly agree with, because why can't they fit? Why can't they fit in these very obvious gaps? There's big spaces. <laughs> why doesn't it work? Okay, right. Come out of that. Can we move you anywhere around here that makes it fit? No. Hang on. Let's see if I can fit any more tables in. I'm supposed to fit just one extra table in. There must be room somewhere in this restaurant. Nope, it has me beat. I don't understand. I don't quite know what's going on with the tables. That, to me, looks like ample room to put a table. I think you could easily fit a table there, and people can get in and out of that table. 
I don't know why it doesn't let us build one there. But then everything else is all a little bit all over the shop. But the little tables here at the front just don't make sense with where they can be positioned. It just doesn't seem to follow any sort of logic. Which, you know what? I, I've been playing chef enough. I shouldn't be that surprised that <laughs> there's no logic involved. So we can fit some of the smaller tables in. So let's try and fit as many of those in as we can. So I think if we can put another one in. I think we notched another one into there. So that's 92. So we're only two seats down on what we had previously. And that leaves us with this ludicrous arrangement just here where this is just right in front of the door. Because for some reason it can fit right in front of the door, but it can't fit that way around. It can't be really near the door. It's just quite near the door. So it's all out of line with these other ones. And I mean, who's going to want to sit there? <laughs> No one's going to sit there, but I'm going to put it there anyway because we can. But that, to me, looks really near to that. But that, the game deems that acceptable. So I don't really understand. I don't fully understand. I did try and make a line down here, but it didn't like putting a table just here or here. It sort of had a bit of a moment there. So, annoyingly, by replacing all of our tables with different tables, the fancier ones that we got from the ICOA contract, we have unfortunately done ourselves out of two seats. Which, you know, isn't the end of the world, but it means we've got two less people in our restaurant making us money, which is a little bit annoying, but never mind. Right, let's move this on until the end of the evening session. In fact, no, we're still on the afternoon session at the moment. Let's get that done. So move this on. You, shoo, eat up and leave. There you go. Bye-bye. And you as well. Are they going? Yep, yeah, lovely. Right, so they're gone. Uh, evening session is imminent as of now. Right, lovely. Everyone come back in. Let's see what monies we've made at the end of today. Okay, it's going well. It's going well. The evening session is just sort of ticking by. Money's looking all right. We've got quite a lot of popularity going on. Just taking a look at some of the uh, some of the comments that people are saying. They got bored while waiting for the food. The service is fairly mixed. Waited a while before finally eating. We waited a little too much to eat. And that means too long, possibly. But they said, what an incredible night. You must go to this restaurant. This person up here, this made me chuckle. Uh, tasting the big meaty bowls was really mind-blowing, which is very lovely. That's a nice pop dish we've seen that before prices have come back down though they're back down on three stars again so maybe we do need to bring the prices down i don't know okay the hour draws late it is now midnight so people should hopefully be now finishing up finishing their meals and going away and yeah it's looking pretty good 580 all of a sudden 581 popularity that is going up at some pace and 14,600. so in this evening session alone we've made three thousand monies which is very good and there we go so yes balance of 1281 so yeah we didn't make that much in food actually this time around we didn't make that much in food annoyingly this this is a little bit annoying the last week thing this is blank it would have been useful to know because i can't remember i swear we made under just a just around 10 grand on food last time didn't we i swear hang on hang on that doesn't make any sense at all that makes no sense. Oh, no. Oh, chef, you were doing so well with your budget screen and now it's all gone to pot again. So uh, apparently earnings is 14,147. Uh, but the food we made 7,500, let's say. And beverages we made 1,100. I'm fairly certain. My math is terrible, but I'm fairly certain that if you added that number to that number, you don't get the earnings number. So, so, so where has the 14 grand come from? <laughs> I don't understand. And of course, this, the results were all a bit skewed because of the furniture and tools and all that kind of stuff. It's all gone a bit sort of strange because I was mucking around with the tables or what have you. But there we go. There we go. It's looking okay. Popularity. Let's just pause time before anyone comes in. Popularity has gone up. We've got some monies. So I think, yeah, because we spent quite a bit on replacing all the tables and stuff, didn't we? Because we don't get all the money back. So, yeah, it's hard to sort of judge the money. So next time out, we'll be having another look at that. We've obviously got more experience points to spend, more ingredients points to spend. There will be more chef happening, of course. And we're still working our way toward these extra things here. We want to get new tourist design at 900 popularity and Eidolon design furnishing contract at 750 popularity. So yes, we're still working our way toward those. But uh, yeah, that's all for next time out. That is all for next time out because I think we've done okay here. We've done okay. I'm not really a fan of the new tables, but whatever. They're in now. They're in now and it'll all be fine. Maybe we can change the walls and stuff when we get to that point. Maybe we'll make the sort of uh, the actual whole appearance of the restaurant look different to maybe match the tables we've got or whatever. I don't know. But yeah, maybe we'll do that next time. I'm not entirely sure. 
So if you did enjoy this, please do leave a like. It's always useful to see the likes so I know what's going well on the channel and what isn't going so well. And also, please do subscribe if you're not already, just to keep up to date with our chefing adventures. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. The pyramids was built far away, the terracotta was built far away, and the Great Wall was built far away. Far away sounds like a very good place to go, doesn't it? Greece, you handsome devil, Alexander. Hello there. King Nipplehead is not at the bottom of the table. I'm above him. Oh, and that was a rather ill-advised move.